Hi everyone, my name is Raquel and I'm a lead naturalist at the Environmental Nature Center. Thank you for joining us on this Instagram Live where we're going to talk about the leave no trace principles. And before we get started, I just want to let you know that um, on Friday we're going to have another Instagram Live at 1 o'clock. Our other lead naturalist, Heather, will be having a video for you to see all about native plants and edible plants. And we are continuing to put, to put these videos on our YouTube um, channel, Environmental Nature Center. So if you miss it or miss part of it, you can always go back and look at the other videos we've made um, and get to learn a little bit more about nature during this time. So like I said, today we're gonna talk about the leave no trace principles. And there are seven. And the leave no trace movement um, it's all about having the least amount of impact when you're out in nature. So if you're like myself and you love to camp and go hiking um, and be out in nature in the wild when we're able to, it is also important to be aware of the impact that you might have on that nature. Of course, it's there for us to enjoy, which is so amazing, but you have to think that there are living things and processes going around um, while we're out there and so we have to think about how we can have the least impact and the leave no trace movement um, Created a documentary in 2018 if you're interested in learning more about it um, And it's also so it's about building awareness, but also thinking about what are the alternatives if we are Not leaving no trace it is you know very expensive and costly restoration to different nature parks has to take place um, the damage that happens to the wildlife and then also, you know, it might lead to restricted access. So if we are not able to have the least amount of impact on nature, um, there might have to be some places that have to restrict access so that um, we as humans aren't having as much impact, which is kind of, you know, not so good. So like I said, that there's seven leave no trace principles and we're going to talk about um, a few of them and talk about different things that have to do with it. So the first one we're going to talk about is um, dispose of waste properly. And so that's thinking about when you go camping or hiking, how can you dispose of your waste properly? So some ideas might be planning ahead, thinking about what you're bringing in um, and making sure that it's things you can bring out. It's also thinking about all those great sustainability um, things that we brought up last week during Earth Week. So what can you bring in that doesn't have as much trash? Um, and then also being aware of what you leave behind. So really being mindful and looking and thinking about what you're bringing in. And the reason why this is, of course, a big deal one, it doesn't look nice. Um, when I go out to nature, I feel sad when I see trash and human impact all around. Um, and then also it impacts wildlife. So we're going to meet an animal that is impacted by this type of pollution. And as we go through this video, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, our other lead naturalist, Heather, is here and she'll be able to let me know if there's any questions. Alright, so we are going to meet a very special animal. This is Elliot. And Elliot is a tiger salamander found here in California. And Elliot is pretty special because he is an indicator species. And so besides being super cute, he helps scientists notice and see if the habitat is healthy. So salamanders have a very special type of skin just like all amphibians do, where they actually take in water through their skin. So their skin's really absorb it. And so you can imagine if there is pollution in the water, where the salamander lives or pollution in the land, it's going to affect the salamander and the population of salamanders is going to go down. And so when we think about leave no trace, we have to think about these really sensitive species. You know, it's really cool to be able to see these salamanders or to see other animals, but if we're not being mindful of maybe the waste that we leave, even if we're going camping, maybe we're backpacking and we might be, 
you know, swimming in water, bathing in water, we have to think about what kind of products and things are on our skin, what kind of soap are we using. All those things can affect animals like Elliot the salamander here. Okay, I'm going to put Elliot away. So that was one of our principles, dispose of waste properly. Now we're going to head out into the nature center and walk on the trail and talk about two more principles. So as we walk, um, we're going to notice what's around, what's in bloom. It's so beautiful here right now. Someone asked why he's called a tiger salamander. Oh, I love that question. So, why do you think? Did you look at its body? What was on its body? Well, if you got a close tiger. Okay, so our second leave no trace principle we're going to talk about is travel and camp on durable surfaces. So that's thinking about where we are walking. Um, and so here at the Nature Center, we have the saying, give plants a chance. And so what that means is we are going to walk on the trails. So the path that is laid out for walking um, and that is anywhere you hike, usually there is a trail for you to be on. And that is to protect the wildlife around us, the plants and the animals. So of course it might be fun to go on an adventure, kind of run through the jungle, run through the woods, but we have to think about what impact that might have. So trails are there for a reason. Um, they're there to protect wildlife and you can tell why it matters, right? If you're walking on a trail, are there usually plants growing there? No, right? So foot traffic, people walking, usually is going to damage the plants. So that's why parks have laid out special paths for people to walk on to help keep the plants safe. And that also is for our protection in a lot of areas here in Southern California, we have poison oak growing. And so that's why we also wanna stay on the trail for our own protection. We can also think about the impact that might have so on other animals. So if we are walking up a trail, we might be damaging animal homes or the plants that they rely on to make their homes or to eat. Um, and so we really have to be thinking about that. And then also thinking about durable surfaces, what does that mean? So that means kind of the hard parts of a path. It's not very um, crumbly and that's so that we don't cause erosion in different areas. So we're gonna continue our walk. Alright, the next leave no trace principle we're going to talk about is leave what you find. So this is all about not taking things out of nature. So you see we have these beautiful flowers blooming right now. And I want you to think about these flowers. Now, of course, this is so beautiful. I might want to pick one and maybe put it in my hair or take it home to show my friend. But I want you to imagine maybe we have 50 poppies here at the Nature Center. What would happen if we have, you know, in a normal time where we're open, we have some visitors come and maybe we have one visitor come and say, oh, I will pick just one of these 50 flowers and there are so many, it won't matter. But then think if everybody has that idea 
um, what will happen? Eventually we will have no beautiful flowers for everybody to look at. Even things like a stick off the ground or a leaf off the ground, we might consider, you know, this doesn't have any value. I can take this with me. This stick is really cool. Um, but that is something that is going to be maybe used by an animal. Different animals use sticks and leaves to build their homes. And so to have the least amount of impact on wildlife, we want to leave everything in nature. Some alternatives that you could think about, maybe of course, taking a picture of that beautiful flower or getting out a sketchbook and drawing it. There's a lot of ways to share what you saw with other people without picking it. All right, we're gonna continue our walk. Abby asks, what's your favorite plant at the Nature Center? Oh, I like that question. I, and we're actually coming up to it, I really love these coast sunflowers we have here. These beautiful yellow wildflowers. And I especially like them because they're usually covered in bees. <laughs> Another reason why we want to leave things in nature is it helps us kind of take care and think about other people, right? So we want nature to stay beautiful for everybody. So it's Instead of just thinking about ourselves and our own enjoyment of that beautiful poppy flower, we <laughs> should think about other people, right? And what they get to see and making sure their experience is just as good as ours. All right, we're continuing to look around and walk through and then we're gonna head back to meet another animal. Oh, this is a pretty special plant that we just came upon that I recently learned about. So it's a type of sage. And when I first saw it, I didn't know what type it was. So I said, this really looks like a white sage, but it also looks like a Cleveland sage or a black sage. And I found out it is a mix. So these plants somehow got hybridized in nature. We didn't do it. Um, it was not by man. And so that's pretty cool, right? Nature is pretty awesome. Another leave no trace principle that we have is related to campfires. So if you see here at the Nature Center, we have our very own fire pit that we use for events uh, and for teaching and learning about how to make fires. And so to have a fire with least impact, we're thinking about how do we keep this fire contained? So when we go camping, we have to be aware of what are the rules about fire? Am I in a place that is too dry and too windy to have a fire? Um, and then also you want to make sure you put a ring around your fire, either with um, stones or if you're in a place with a designated um, space for a fire, it's really important to be mindful of that so that your fire doesn't move. <laughs> and then also when you're going to put out your fire, you're thinking about breaking the fire triangle. So the fire triangle involves fuel, heat, um, and air. And so if you are to break that fire triangle, that's how you put your fire out. So you need to think about, you know, either taking away the oxygen, you can um, reduce the heat that's going on. So you're taking away the fuel, you might cover it with sand or water. And then another big important thing is to break up the fuel. So taking a shovel or a rock and spreading out the, um, embers that are burning so that it your fire is completely out and that it won't um, jump in the night while you're sleeping and then harm the area around you. A big grasshopper on the ground.
All right, the next Leave No Trace principle we're going to talk about is respect wildlife. And this is super important, right? Everything that we are doing with the Leave No Trace principles are to have the least amount of impact. So it's really important that we respect wildlife and let them be wild. So I have a special animal that we're going to need. And this animal has been getting a lot of attention in our media posts, but this is Ringo, our blue death fainting beetle. And Ringo lives in the desert. And you might be thinking, wow, this is a cute little beetle. And next time you're in the desert, you might want to pick one up because you can see Oh, Raquel was holding that at the ENC. It is a harmless animal. I think I will pick one up next time I go. But it's very important that we, when we are out in the wild, we leave things where they are and we respect an animal's space. So even this tiny beetle has a purpose in nature. So beetles are really awesome because they are decomposers. They're basically the um, trash cleaners of the environment. So anytime there are dead things or scat in nature, these beetles are gonna come up and they're gonna eat it and they are gonna turn that waste into dirt to help keep the environment going. And so they serve a really important purpose even though they are small. And the other thing that we want to think about, so maybe even I'm in the desert, I see this beetle, I might not want to take it with me, but I might just want to pick it up because that sounds really fun and it's really cute and I want to take a picture with it. But we need to remember <laughs> that our hands have oils on them and then also we have a distinct smell and that can harm wildlife in a way that we wouldn't really think about. So um, when we pick up wildlife and different animals and we are transferring our oils and smells onto them, it can affect their skin. It can also affect the way that they interact with other species. So maybe this beetle is trying to mate and we have messed up its ability to do that because the other beetles are like, hey, you smell weird. <laughs> so we really have to be mindful um, about the impact that we might have. If you want to see animals and hold animals, that's what pets are for. That is what nature centers are for. We have animals ambassadors like Ringo's here where you get to touch and feel them without disrupting wildlife. All right, I'm going to put Ringo away. So there are two other leave no trace principles that we haven't talked about. One is plan ahead and prepare. And this is so important because when we plan ahead, we are um, more likely to be least impact, right? We're more likely to leave no trace when we think about where we're going, what we're going to need, um, what food should we bring? What's the weather going to be like? Um, when we plan ahead and we look ahead at the weather and the timing and how long we plan to be out, then we're more likely to have less impact because we're prepared um, and we won't have to use wildlife to try to help us when we're unprepared. The other one is be considerate of other visitors. So that is what I mentioned before with um, picking wildlife and why we don't want to, and picking plants, why we don't want to do that is because we want to be mindful of other people so that everybody can have the same experience and enjoyment of nature that we did. This also involves, you know, being um, kind on the trails, so letting other people pass you, um, it also means maybe I'm at a campsite and I'm not going to play my music really loud even though I like it because other people are trying to enjoy nature and I don't want to be disturbing to other people. So again, these Leave No Trace principles are all about how can we be aware of our impact on nature and the nature that we really enjoy to help preserve it and so there won't have to be restricted access. 
Um, if you want to learn more about the Leave No Trace principles, I encourage you to either watch the documentary that's out about them. Also, there's a website, LNT, like Leave No Trace, dot org, where you can see activities and a lot more information about the Leave No Trace principles. So thank you for watching. Um, again, this video will be on our YouTube shortly and our other live videos are also posted there. Um, and tune in Friday at one o'clock to see our other uh, Lee Naturalist Heather give her live video. All right, everyone, thank you, have a good day.